about uh, decoding strategies to enhance parity quantum approximate optimization. And by the way, she's from Innsbruck University. Thank you. So can you hear me clearly? Yeah, good. Okay, so yeah, I will present you um, to you my work about decoding strategies to enhance parity quantum approximate optimization, which I do during my uh, PhD at the university in Innsbruck. So um, here you can see our, our group. So in the middle you see the head of our group, Professor Wolfgang Lechner, who is also involved in this project, as well as our postdoc, Glendon Bang, which you can see here, or just sitting right next to me. <laughs> and yeah, as some people may know our group, we work a lot with the LHZ model. So, and to come to this, I want to show you here shortly how to encode optimization problems. So here you see Hamiltonian and the yeah, 2D qubit arrangement. So the circles are the qubits and they're connecting lines. So the edges are the interactions where the um, interaction strength is JIJ is where the problem is encoded. And, and on a physical device now one would have this problem to yeah, encode these long range um, interactions. And this is actually now the main motivation behind the LZ model, which implements these interactions as local fields. This model was introduced in 2015 by Wolfgang Lechner and Philipp Hauck and Peter Zoller. So it's the LZ because it's just the first letters of those um, uh, surnames. And to show you how this works, I want to demonstrate on this um, wall for a qubit example. So you already see if, uh, uh, the, all the qubits are up. And now in the LZ model, I actually encode um, the parities between those qubits. So if they're parallel, they will get the value zero. And if they're anti-parallel, they get the value one in the LZ model. And as I have six interactions, I have here six qubits. Yeah each with a local field. But as I have now um, more qubits than on this logical model here on the left, I need to implement constraints because now I can have configurations here in the physical model that do not translate back to the logical one. So I want to show you this by flipping the top spin. So here on top, there is now a, a one. And now the question is, how is the configuration now on the, on the left-hand side in the, in the logical model? So I start um, with the decoding. So we look at the first qubit here, which um, tells me the parity between um, qubit zero and qubit one. So it's supposed to be parallel. So we can fix them on the left-hand side to both up, for example. And then I look the second qubit. It's also uh, supposed to be um, parallel, so it's also up. But now the third qubit is supposed to be anti-parallel to qubit zero. So we've set it to down. And if I go on now and look at the parity between qubit one and three, which is supposed to be um, parallel in the physical model here, but here you will see on the left, they're already anti-parallel. The one is up and the one is down. So we ran into a contradiction and yeah, so we can't construct a valid logical state. But as we can't just throw this state away, <laughs> In the physical model, you can give it an energy penalty because we are just interested in the ground state. Do this with the constraint. So we have a constraint condition and the constraints you can see as this um, gray triangle and this gray diamond. So the condition on this gray diamond would be that the amount of zeros here of this four qubits should be even. And as we have three, so this is violated and yeah, would get an energy shift to higher energies. Also, if I would add one more qubit in the, in the logical one, this relates to like a full row in the LHZ model. So in fact, the number of physical qubits square quadratically with the number of logical ones, which I'll show you now also in the, in the next slide. So I see here the number of logical qubits on the x-axis and the number of possible states on the y-axis. So we, the, the green line corresponds now to the LZ model and the blue line to the logical one. So we see that we have a great overhead in the physical model of this constraint violating states. So states that never translate back to this logical one 
And of course, we're interested in the logical states because one of them is our ground state. And um, this can actually now be a, a problem in QAOA, which is short for Quantum Approximate Optimization Algorithm, proposed by Farid Ali in 2014. Just you can see here a schematic circuit, how it works. I mean, we already heard it a few times today. So we start with an initial state, and then we apply our unitaries um, p times. So the unitaries you can see here on the right. We have a driver term and a problem, uh, one unitary containing the problem Hamiltonian. And yeah, if would p would go to infinity, we would reach the exact solution. But yeah, as we can't do that, we get an approximate one. Then we can perform our measurements where the outcome depends on our first guess of these parameters, beta and gamma. And with this, we can evaluate our energy and hand it to the, a classical optimizer, which seeks to yeah, minimize the energy. So the optimizer can then uh, return a new set of parameters to our quantum circuit. And I repeat this till I reach a reach a convergence criteria. And now, as I said, we start with an initial state. And in general, this is an equal superposition of all the states. But as I said in a physical model, we will have a lot of these constraint violating states. And as we can't apply this unitary uh, infinite amount of time, we will always have a high probability to measure this, those states, uh, yeah, which will never um, contribute anything to the solution. So we will have a low performance, and that's why we need a solution, which I want to present to you now. So here you see the adapted circuit, like in particular OA, so in QOA and the Z model, we have one more unitary, and this is because we split up our problem Hamiltonian into the local field term and into the constraint term. But actually the new stuff now happens here at the measurement, because here we also decode. And we decode a physical state into a logical state, so we can hand a logical energy to the optimizer. So we, so to say, get rid of our unphysical states. But as I told you here, we, it's not easy to translate them back, because we ran here between qubit and three already in this contradiction. But actually, before we read out qubit one three, we actually had already a logical state. And if we now look at this um, red um, line, so the edges between those um, qubits, we see that they actually cover all the, the nodes, so all the qubits, without making a loop. So as soon as I made the loop, I ran into this contradiction. And that's actually the definition of a, of a spanning tree. And if I look at other spanning trees here, um, we see that we can always decode a state. So on the bottom you see the uh, logical state where the arrows denote the spanning tree. And on the top you see the, the physical model where yeah, the marked qubits um, translate and uh, correspond to these um, interactions to the trees. So I basically can just take those three qubits which corresponds to these lines and decode the state. And in fact here, for example, on this first example on the left, a fixed qubit number zero to up, and look at the parities to yeah the other qubit. So I can determine, okay, is the other qubit, should it be parallel or not? And like this, I can decode. And in a complete graph, so in an ultra connected graph as I have here, there are in total n to the power n minus two spanning trees possible. So here I show four, but as I have four qubits, they're in total 16. So that would be uh, other. 12 spanning trees for the decoding. Also I want you to see if we focus now again on these four big examples on the left, that the decoded states, they are not always the same. So you see in the first one, the third qubit, uh, qubit number three has a downspin, and the other two in the middle, they always have upspins. And this is because my physical state violates a constraint. So if I have a constraint vi violating state, all these, these spanning trees could return a, new, a different logical state. But if all the constraints would be fulfilled, all the spanning trees would give me the same logical state. And yeah, with this information, I can show you how we construct now a new objective function. So on the bottom, you see this physical state we want to decode. And now we just consider physical qubits 
that correspond to spanning tree in the logical model. So we, for example, we take those three qubits and then we can construct our logical state like this. But of course we can take more of them. So for example, we'd also take, yeah, a second one. So we have two spanning trees and two logical states. And then we just take um, the average energies of those um, states um, to calculate the energy like this. So in these examples, we will just add those two energies and divide it by two. And now I already want to show you um, our results. So you can see here that on the x-axis we have the number of logical qubits. And if I use, uh, if I have six logical qubits, I also um, take six spanning trees for the decoding. And on the y-axis, see on the left plot, we have the residual energy, which is calculated like this. So the measured energy minus the ground state energy, and then the maximal minus the ground state energy. Like this. Um, a low energy value, so the values go down from zero to one, and a low value is uh, preferable. Also on the right plot, uh, where I have one minus the success probability. And uh, the blue line you can see here corresponds to the parity QOA. So you can see it really um, um, rises fast to the value of one, which is bad, but with the decoding, which is the orange line, actually get uh, really good results. So we could improve it. It's also better than the, the green line, which is the swap approach, and I call it swap, because in a logical model, um, it's standard to uh, implement these um, long range interactions with um, swap gates, so I have to bring them together, so I would swap those qubits, so they are next to each other, and then I implement this interaction. In this case, it um, doesn't matter because I have an ideal circuit, but now I introduce um, a depolarizing noise to our two qubit gates, so now it matters how many C-nots I, I use. So, because one swap gate consists of three C-not gates here, and in the LZ model, I have to implement my constraints with um, C-not gates. So for a qubit, um, Constraint would be implemented with um, six C nots, a three qubit constraint with four. So I have more C not gates in my um, parity embedding. And but still, as you can see, this orange line, so the parity with um, the decoding, already has um, a higher uh, success probability that already with 10% um, noise, it's as good as the one with the swap approach with um, zero noise. But um, this is done with um, six logical qubits, so 15 in the LED set, so exactly the size you can see here. So I wanted to uh, make a different comparison with modular parity QIOA. So um, this was actually published, I think, about two weeks ago from some people of our group. And there you actually start from a constraint fulfilling state and then you apply a driver that only introduces transitions to other constraint fulfilling states so that I never leave my um, constraint fulfilling subspace to non-constraint fulfilling ones. And I do this by introducing um, so-called um, driver lines. So here we see the LZ model and one line here that is driver line, the purple one goes for all the qubits uh, with the number of five and the orange one goes through all the qubits with uh, four in it. So that are the lines and the driver term is just the sum of those um, lines. Like this, our model is equivalent to the swap approach, so this would all be equivalent. That's why here with zero noise, this bar here starts at the same point, but as soon as I apply the noise, we see the difference. Again, I have more C nodes in the blue um, approach or in the parity than in the, in the swap approach. But I see when I use the decoding, I'm very stable to noise. So with this, I can um, summarize it now. I showed you how to do the um, decoding and to yeah, construct the new objective function. So we could improve parity QOA with it. And we also show better performance than the swap model, uh, at least with small system sizes. But we are more st also more stable um, to noise if you use a modular parity QOA. So now I'm open for questions. Thanks. Hi, uh, 
actually have a question in slide number 10. Can you please go to that? Mm -hmm. Yes, this one. Uh, yes. Uh, so, in the uh, last place, you were taking uh, this uh, EL alpha, beta, gamma. And why did you come up with this formula? What is the objective? Um, because now we have, um, because we have several logical state now that correspond to one um, physical one. So then was the question which energy should we take? So we could also take the, the minimum energy. But as we just um, look at the small problem size, we thought it's not such a uh, nice comparison as well. Uh -huh. That's why I decided yeah. first on this uh, on the average. Uh -huh. And I actually also have another question that I actually had from yesterday. Why would somebody choose a parity qubit instead of a normal qubit? And this is because, as I um, had it in the beginning, that implementing these interactions, especially this, um, if qubits are far away, um, is not possible in a physical uh, device. So we, we are limited to the connectivity of this, um, of the physical device. And with a parity qubit, I just need local fields and the qubits with the constraints, I just can implement C nodes with, uh, with the neighbors. So I'm very um, independent of the hardware I use. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So, so you explain how to, uh, how to get the uh, energies from the many uh, uh, decoded states you get, but uh, how do you get the, the states you want out of the many like, decoded states? Um, I can decide on the spanning trees. I can take random ones. I just have to fix an amount. And if I have those I decided on the spanning trees, I have to decode them and get my collection. So I just have to decide how, which spanning trees I want and how many. Yeah, so, so, so how did you decide like which spanning tree you take uh, as your solution? Um, what I first did, I have to like, I looked at the performance, for example, on, yeah, how does it depend on how many spanning trees I take? And then I chose when I have, yeah, six logical qubits, then I, shows actually the spanning trees as you can see here in this big example, but just for a bigger, with more qubits. So I decided to, because then I cover uh, all the physical qubits and yeah, I chose those spanning trees, which we call also like the logic lines. You read out the logic lines of it, yeah. Oh, okay, so, so as you increase the number of spanning trees, you ground state probability increases. Sorry? So, so as you increase the number of uh, spanning trees, you actually consider, uh, you, you get that, you have more probability to actually get the ground state. For, for, for um, yes, but it will, st um, yeah, stagnate at some point. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yes. Could you comment once again, what is your initial state? Is it some pure state of your? No, I have an, always an equal superposition of all the basis stage. It's like in, like in quantum annealing. But is it a pure state of your more complicated Hamiltonian or it is some? No, of my, of my physical device, yeah, of my physical configuration, yeah. And how does it look like it's? Do you have some formula how it looks like allowing all your constraints or? I mean, I... It should not be just X, 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 like in a standard QA or A because you have constraints, right? Yes, yes, but here I, I also consider the, the constraint violating state, so I take all of them. Just not in the, the last slide I, I showed, yes. Yeah, but 
with this modular parity, I, I can't tell you exactly. Ah, so you yeah. start from some state which, yeah, it's which is not the which fulfills all the constraints. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other questions? If not, we can thank.